Hello viewers, you're welcome to Sahara TV. My name is Omoyele Shore, and we're reaching you live from New York City. As promised, we have today on the line from my Duguri in Borono State in Nigeria, northwestern Nigeria. A Lieutenant Colonel who is in charge, who is the spokesperson for the Joint Task Force, uh, no, I mean, known as it, popularly known as the JTF, that has been confronting and battling with Islamist militants Boko Haram. And uh, we want to talk to him about a variety of uh, issues uh, regarding security, human rights, and uh, the efforts by the army, Nigerian army, to quell this insurrection by Boko Haram. Hello, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Musa Saga. Yeah, how are you? Very good. Thanks you. Thanks to you for coming to our show. Uh, for those of people, for the people around the world who don't even know what the JTF is about. Uh, what it stands for. Can you please just do a little explanation of what what the JTF is composed of, what it's about? Yes. Go ahead. The, the JTF is referring to Joint Tax Force and it's composed of elements of the Nigerian Armed Forces Army, Navy, Air Force, and then the Nigerian Police Force, Nigerian Immigration Services, Nigerian Customs, Nigerian Civil Defense Corps, and State security services. Okay. So you are in the, if I, if I get you correctly, you are in the northwestern arm of JTF, right? We are in the northeastern part of Nigeria, oh, particularly yes. in Borno State, okay. Maiduguri. Okay. So you are in the northeastern section of the JTF, so you handle the hottest areas where Boko Haram is been active, particularly uh, Borno State and Yobe State, uh, if I'm correct. We are, our joint task force is called the name Operation Restore Order 1. Okay. Specifically in charge of Borno State, whose headquarters in Maiduguri. Okay. So you are reaching us from Maiduguri currently? That is right. Yes. Uh, has there been any attacks by Boko Haram in your area in the last 24 hours? In the last 24 hours, there have not been any attack on any of our locations. Okay. So, give us an idea how many civilians have been killed since JTF came to start uh, to quell the insurrection in the northeastern region. How many people have died? Let's start with civilians. Well, right from the inception of the Joint Task Force, yes. it's not easy for me now to instantly give you the exact figures of those that lost their lives in my degree. Okay. Because this is an incidents that has been taking place for the last one year. What about the number of people within your force, the JTF? Do you have an estimate of how many people have uh, fallen casualty to the Boko Haram people? Uh, yes, for the last one year, I think we have lost four soldiers. Four soldiers? Yes. It, it, yeah, in my degree. Okay. What about there the, might be other instances in other states of the federation? When you say soldiers, when you say soldiers, are you counting, you know, uh, just the Nigerian army, or are you talking about the police, immigration? Because we have no, uh, I'm recorded. Talking, I'm talking in the context of armed forces. Okay. We have recorded on our own in my degree alone at least. Uh, Nothing less than 40 uh, uniformed people who may not necessarily be in the JTF. So, four soldiers, I don't know, are you sure? Your statistics is not right. Okay. We are on the ground. 
Okay. We are the ones facing the heat. If there is anything close to that ego, I think I should do you a favor yes. by honestly and patriotically telling you the exact figure. So, I might be wrong, but I think the figure you are calling is far, far exaggerated. I mean, the point I'm making here, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Musa, is that there are policemen who are just returning from work who get killed. There are custom officials who are returning from work, immigration officials that have abandoned their duty posts because they've been attacked and killed. You are saying that only four soldiers have been killed by Boko Haram in the last one year, Maiduguri? No, 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 no. I'm talking of members of the armed forces. All right, all right. All in right. the JTF. Police, immigration, customs, you can get that figures from their headquarters. Respective headquarters. I may not know the exact figure of those killed from the police force, from the immigration, custom, prison, civil defense, and other law enforcement agencies. Certainly, they too have their own casualties. Yes. So let's go to the number of people within Boko Haram, militants that have been killed, because we keep hearing different figures. And you know, Boko Haram keeps saying, well, sometimes these things are not true. How many, in your own estimation, of their soldiers, militants, have been killed in your operation in the last one year? Well, as a military officer, I am supposed by professional disposition to be disciplined and precise in whatever I do or say. Okay. I cannot give you an estimate. And for me to accurately, precisely give you the exact figure of those who lost their lives as a result of Boko Haram insurgency in our area of responsibility. I have to go back to the records which are not currently available. I have to go back to the office. Incidentally, I'm not in the office as of the time of speaking uh, to you now. Yeah, but you so you don't, because there was a time last week where you said we killed 20 Boko Haram uh, militants. Next day, Boko Haram comes out and say, they lied. You know, those people who were killed as civilians, innocent civilians. What, how do you react to that? If they are innocent civilians, by the time we issued press release, we could have stated that exactly. The point we are making is, here are people that are confronted security forces. Confrontation in the sense that they were shooting at us. Okay. And we are responding. And by the time the dust settled, yes. those killed, even though in civil clothes, but they were with arms and ammunition. So let me ask you, how much effort does the Nigerian army, the JTF, make into ensuring that rights of innocent civilians are protected? Because we keep hearing people in Maiduguri saying, you know, we've been victim of JTF uh, high-handedness. People arrested, people brutalized, killed, uh, who said they're innocent. How, how do you determine who is a Boko Haram person? You know, are there not times that you shoot dust settles and you say, oh my God, these are just innocent people who have died in crossfire? No, 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 no. We can easily determine those who are Boko Haram and those who are not. So you One, know them? Those who are not Boko Haram, they don't carry arms. And they don't act su suicidal. Okay. So one of, the, one of the ways you identify Boko Haram people is that they are very suicidal. When you say that, what do you mean? What I mean is that these are people that not only carry arms, explosives, ammunition, but they can easily give in their lives. Again, let me ask, the people you killed last week, Boko Haram said... We don't even put 20 of our people in a place. It's, it's never happened. We operate in smaller cells. You know, but you said 20 people were killed in the same place. Boko Haram is saying, no, not, they are not our people. How, who do we believe, uh, Colonel? I think you have to believe an institution that has integrity, the Nigerian army. 
Uh, the point is that the point is that Boko Haram statement was pure for propaganda. Okay. We wouldn't accuse civilians. We are not mad. Here is a trained, disciplined, and committed professional fighting force, the Nigerian Armed Forces. We wouldn't have done that. I will never do that. I always say, by our training, by the utterances and disposition of our commanders and troops, we are law-abiding citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We operate under a given mandate. And in the context of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Colonel Musa, there are people who will disagree with you, knowing that the Nigerian army has a history of brutality, has a history of coup plotting and not respecting human rights. Of course, some of them have ended in, uh, in courts in international uh, jurisdiction, where the Nigerian army has been accused of brutalizing, especially people in Ogoni land. Uh, you've heard about the Odi raid, the Zaki Biam attacks, so many of the things that your army has look, engaged in that look, were clearly, please, clearly abusive. My uh, brother, yes. these are people that are not well educated on the current situation in Nigeria and in particular the Nigerian armed forces. Do we, look, you are talking of the army of yesterday. This is a brand new Nigerian army in particular. We don't do that. If we are going, if we are committing genocide, as you want to impute, the situation wouldn't have been as it is today. Remember, we equally are men. We are periodically being shot at by the Boko Haram. So, and many of the casualties you are referring to are with the handwork of members of the Boko Haram. Certainly not uh, joint tax force. We are mindful of that. So let me ask you, one of the things President Jonathan, the commander in chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, said a few days ago, he said, we know these guys, we could have rounded them up and wiped them out, but we don't want to do it. Do you know where the Boko Haram leadership is? Do you know how to get them? And what is delaying taking them out of, uh, out of existence? Well, the statement made by Mr. President and commander in chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, is a statement made by him. I cannot comment on that. Okay. But going, knowing that Maiduguri is the home base of Boko Haram, do you know where their leadership is based? Do you know how to locate these guys? I mean, they still keep making videos uh, responding to you, and they seem very safe and comfortable. They still say they want to attack, and they attack, and they are getting more and more brazen. Do you know how to locate these guys? Do you know their whereabouts? Well, here in Maiduguri, yes. members of, of Boko Haram, if any, they are on the run. They are on the run. And I don't think I'm being fair to tell you that we know where they are. Huh? If we know where they are, then the fight would have come to an end by now. Why are they elusive? Why are they difficult have, to locate know. for you? Is it, are you, are you, do you have shortage of intelligence? Well, there is quantity of intelligence, certainly. Yeah. But much is being done, and we are getting, we are closing on to them, we are arresting, while they confront us, we engage them seriously, we even killed in the process, we kill them. So, it's not that we are totally deficient in terms of intelligence, no. But the intelligence, it's ongoing. You keep on building up. And that is what we are doing. And that is what is accounting for the successes we are recording. So the, the question again that Nigerians would like to ask you is, when do you think this insurgency will end? Is this going to keep going forever since you can't seem to locate where these guys are and they, it's getting more and more brazen and more daring? Uh, on the yeah, yeah, in yeah. terms of the ability yes. to strike at you guys in particular. Yes, insurgency is not peculiar to Nigeria. And that as crime 
keep on mutating, keep on changing. The tendency is that in due course, sooner or later, this issue, the issue of Boko Haram will come to an end. More so, the federal government on many occasions has sufficiently demonstrated that they are disposed to dialogue. In some of the reports that I read recently, even today, I learned that dialogue between the federal government and Boko Haram has commenced. So hopefully, in this context, we envisage, we believe that sooner, I mean, sooner or later, this crisis will come to an end. That's a very, very good point, that this dialogue happening. Is the JTF going to accept the terms of the dialogue? I mean, are you just going to throw up your hands and say, well, since they are dialoguing now, we're fine, uh, no more fight? Dialogue is a political matter based on our political leadership, which they are confronting honestly and patriotically. JTF has no option, has no terms. Our terms are vested in what our leaders direct us to do. Our responsibility is vested, I mean, rests quietly on giving security advice to our leaders. And they have the option of either taking or not. We don't have option but to obey the, the, the command given to us by our political leaders and our military high, through our appropriate military high command. Simple. The point then is this, uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, if the federal government knows how to find Boko Haram and dialogue, that means they actually know their location. So is it possible that somebody has been shielding these guys all along from the military arm of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? This question should be directed to the federal government. I'm not in a position to comment on it. Okay. So going back to how long or how soon this will be over, you keep saying soon. If there's a breakdown of dialogue and Boko Haram resumes full you know, militancy and attacks on the federal government of Nigeria, churches, uh, you know, symbols of authority like around the country, including mosques, even sometimes, I mean, not mosque as in church and mosque, uh, how do you think you can cope with that? Are you ready, in case there's a breakdown in uh, the so-called dialogue, to confront these guys squarely, uh, effectively, and finally? Well, uh, I'm always optimistic. In the sense that I don't think this time around the dialogue will break down. Anyway, in case it happens, which I believe and I hope and I pray it shouldn't, that is why we are on standby. Do you think the dialogue has been responsible for the reason why there has not been any attack in the last 24 hours? The ongoing dialogue? No comment on that. Okay. So you are not officially aware if there's dialogue or not? No comment on that. So, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Musa, it's very interesting that you say my Duguri Boko Haram is on the run. Are they on the run in Yobe, where they seem to also have uh, a lot of uh, uh, activity? I'm not mandated to speak on JTF activities in Yobe state. Okay. But I know very well that the Joint Task Force in Yobe are up to the responsibility of containing the situation, and they are just doing that. Final Why question I'd like to ask you. Standard? Final question I'd like to ask you. One of the army generals recently said the army is overstretched by internal conflict in Nigeria. You know, are you guys uh, wary? Are, are you are you worn out by now by this incessant incessant attacks uh, by Boko Haram? Uh, Please, can you can, can you tell me the generals that said that? Well, we, we, we read that the chief of army staff, I mean, one of the army generals said at an event in Jaws that you guys are overstretched. I want to know who is the general? Well, there are several generals in the Nigerian army. In particular, I don't have the name right in front of me here, but this was... Do, uh, do you have his appointment? Was... Do you have his appointment? 
This was reported all over the newspapers in Nigeria and it was never refuted. Do you have his appointment, a general has name, and he has an office. We if you don't know the name, tell me the office. We definitely can get that to you after this interview. Then, at that point, I will respond accordingly. Okay. Well, uh, last question, sorry. I, I know I said I had a last question. Uh, is that in my Duguri, just somebody was reaching us now that some of the things that the JTF does that rise local population is that you do this house-to-house -house search and it violates their privacy, it violates their integrity, and people are roughened up by the JTF, especially when you know, there's an attack. The way people are rounded up and uh, general inconvenience and uh, you know, the JTF also abuses people's rights. How do you react to that? Well, uh, we know the rights of individuals. We know their culture and their religion. So we always respect that. So you are saying but, that this is not true, that the JTF overreaches itself uh, by just overreacting or not taking into consideration the rights of the human rights of a lot of residents in places where no uh, no 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 Boko we don't we don't uh, we don't no we are not reckless we are not careless we are not irresponsible we don't overact what we do however is where you see overacting we are not overacting to the civilians we are overacting to the combatants the Boko Haram when they attack us okay. Well, General, I mean, sorry, Lieutenant Colonel Musa Sagar, thank you so much for coming on our show. I know it's uh, going to be a long weekend because uh, it's the Ramadan, uh, I mean, the Ramadan is ending and it's going to be Salah. So how do I, thank you very much, how do I listen to you? Well, we're going to send you uh, a piece of this. This is going on live to the, to the rest of the world. In fact, our people said they have the name of the general. Maybe we just give you the name of the general who said that they are overstretched. If you give me a second. Then we now, <laughs> okay. All but right. then, which means it's not your last question. The question I just answered is not your last question. Well, we wanted because we, you know, our, we were trying to make sure that this information is made accurate because, like I told you, a lot of people are listening to you all over the world.